I don't know why people scoff at reinventing the wheel when we've already been reinventing it since the beginning. There are those who take reinventing the wheel to new heights, creating these crazy one-of-a-kind conveyances. What do you do in your spare time when your job is creating animatronics and robots for franchises like Harry Potter and Star Wars? You spend what the builder says is hundreds of thousands of British pounds and build yourself a drivable six-legged robot and call it the Mantis, naturally. Builder Matt Denton is no stranger to making robots that have strange ways of getting around. He's part of the team that created the BB-8 from Star Wars, the beach ball-shaped Astrodroid. But his real inspiration, like many of us, was seeing the marching AT-ATs in Empire Strikes Back. So in 2001, he began professionally programming hexapod robots for animatronic effects for motion pictures, and in his spare time, designing one that he can ride around, because who wouldn't? The whole project ended up taking three years to build, finally making its first successful walk in 2013. At just over 2 tons and standing 9 feet tall, it's the tallest operational hexapod in existence. So you can tell your neighbor that's been bragging about their hexapod that there's a bigger one. Two joysticks and 28 buttons give the robot 18 points of movement, which is powered by a 50 horsepower 2.2 liter diesel engine. In the end, the neck breaking speed of 1 km an hour at gallons of fuel for each mile, Denton acknowledges that this is not an efficient way to get around, but it is super cool. He uses the robot for demonstrations to help inspire people to learn about robotics. The problem with being an engineer is that you're only making things that people ask you to build, and those things, annoyingly, have to have a purpose other than being cool. That's why Dutch engineer Milo, of the YouTube channel Master Milo, dished his job making stuff with a purpose, and instead created crazy concoctions for his YouTube channel, whose only purpose is to be cool. Like Carole, the roll car. By cutting off the front of a front wheel drive compact and then placing it in a giant pair of wheels, he's created a rolling amusement park ride. It's actually an evolution of his previous projects, looking for ways to roll cars over and over again. The first being the roll golf. The Corolla can be controlled, if you can call it control, be it two brakes, one for each giant wheel. If you need to turn, pull one. If you want to see your unwitting passenger's face turn red from being spun around, you can lock both wheels and send the car inside spinning around. If you think that a car that rolls inside two giant wheels is the most pointless thing that Master Milo could build that would also make you go, can I try it? You haven't seen the Whip Car 2.0. The design is pretty straightforward. Take a junker station wagon, build a big apparatus elevating a couch well ahead of the car, and then feed controls to it. If you're asking yourself why, you've already kind of missed the point. But the goal is to get the car to kind of do a stoppy and then dip the bench all the way to the ground on the stop. Finding weird ways to tip things over is only part of the fun. The channel has also created homemade tanks and is in the process of restoring a real one. Building a giant robot is fine and all, but what you really want to do is build a giant robot and then fight another giant robot. That was the dream of Matt Orline and fellow roboticists and engineers Guy Cavacanti and Andrew Stroop. In 2014, out of a shop in Hayward, California, they started Megabots with one goal in mind, challenge Japan to a giant robot duel. After raising $3.8 million off their second version Iron Glory, they went to Kickstarter to finish out their ultimate version of the fighting robot, Eagle Prime. The $2.5 million beast rode on track developed by the people behind the Ripsaw recreational tank and, at the request of the Japanese team, had melee weapons as well as paintball shooting mounts. Megabots achieved their initial dream when they had a showdown with the Japanese bot Suidobashi that, for production reasons, ended up being scripted. In 2019, Megabots' financial woes finally caught up with it, and without the giant fighting robot league happening, they ended up selling the $2.5 million robot on eBay for a final bid of $29,900. Another event that attracts makers and builders with a collection of Just Because oddities is the 24 Hours of Lemon series, a play on the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Except these cars are $500 junkers turned into race cars. While a winner is determined at every event, for Lemons, how you did it is more important than how fast. That led to things like the racing camper trailer, racing Cessna, and the upside down Camaro. The flipped Camaro is a product of Sergeant Block, a law enforcement officer with a penchant for cars and oddity. To create the beast, they found a non-running Ford Fiesta for $200, and then found an also not running Camaro for $800. They cut up the Fiesta, then cut a hole in the Camaro, and placed it upside down on the Fiesta after reviving the 60 horsepower engine. A cage from a previous Lemons Geo Metro completed the picture, and then they were off to the races, 
where they finished 98th out of 139 cars. Known as Speedy Cop on YouTube, they have since been responsible for the Spirit of Lemons airplane car, Speedy Copter, an amphibious race car made from a helicopter, and the Trippy Tippy Hippie van. Not everyone can hit the garage and craft a one-of-a-kind weirdo creation. For the super well-heeled, they can get a unique ride from an exotic car maker like Ferrari. Ferraris are already difficult to obtain new, as Ferrari is particular about who can buy their cars. Even with that arbitrary barrier just beyond six figures, some want something even more unique, like the discerning European client who ordered the Ferrari Omologata, a single-example custom-built Ferrari by Ferrari. This is only the tenth one all Ferrari has built with the front-engine layout. The car starts off with the flagship 812 Superfast, with everything but windshield and headlights remaining of the body. The rest is custom-designed to revoke the rich Ferrari sports car racing heritage. The whole project took two years to develop, with the price kept secret, but the 812 Superfast itself starts at $330,000. Sure, you can take a street car and make it look like a race car, or you can take one of the most successful race cars of all time and strap some license plates on it as a gift to your cheap racing sponsor, like the Porsche 917 chassis 030 that was sold to Count Rossi of Martini and Rossi for an undisclosed sum. Porsche gave Rossi the legendary race car that was first used as a test mule for anti-lock brakes, then retiring for suspension issues in the 1971 Zeltwig 1000km race in Austria. Porsche put a muffler and some mirrors on their racer and wished to count luck finding someone who would certify it for the road. European countries weren't having it, but he found a county in Alabama willing to give the then 4-year-old race car historic plates, clearing the way for the count to drive his 200 miles per hour endurance racer from Stuttgart to Paris as part of many road trips he took in the beast. Since then, two other well-heeled owners have managed to find someone to give them license plates as well as using Rossi as a precedent. A non-license plate 917S trades hands at auctions rarely for as much as $14 million. Never mind that we hold the world's knowledge at our fingertips via a device that we all slip into our pockets. This feature doesn't have rocket packs, and we're upset about it. Well, it doesn't have widely available jetpacks, but some well-funded engineer enthusiasts have built some reasonable approximations of our sci-fi dreams, like the Zapata Flyboard Air. Built by Frankie Zapata, the Flyboard Air is here to let you live all your Green Goblin glider dreams. Zapata is a jet ski champion, responsible for the Flyboard, a water jet powered platform that allows users to shoot out the ocean or lake on a column of water, a popular attraction at watery tourist spots around the world. Zapata took his idea and swapped out a jet engine that can take him 10,000 feet and fly for 10 minutes. This isn't just hovering around awkwardly and waving either. The flyboard reaches speeds of over 100 miles per hour and has been used across the English Channel. While there's not telling how much money went into developing the flyboard air, a commercial version dubbed the Easy Fly with hand controls is likely to demand around $250,000. Sure, Italian motorcycle makers like Ducati or Aprilia can make you an expensive motorcycle, but if you're looking to have the most expensive motorcycle, you'd have to go with Neiman Marcus and their $11 million motorcycle. The Neiman Marcus limited edition fighter started life as a Confederate P120 fighter bike, then adds a bunch of designer touches. The 197 mile per hour bike is powered by a 160 horsepower, 1,966 cc engine. 45 examples were built with a starting price of $110,000, but when one went up for auction, Neiman Marcus learned that they might have underpriced their bike as it hammered away for $11 million. This isn't the first time that Neiman Marcus dabbled in two wheels, collaborating with Ducati for a special edition, but those don't demand the same lofty auction prices. People have been building Go Anywhere vehicles since the invention of the automobile. Even the Model T was meant as a Go Anywhere car, but no vehicle has achieved its Go Anywhere-ness quite like the $115,000 Sherp. The compact pod is made of docal high-strength steel that has twice the tensile strength of an average car. The bottom is entirely smooth to prevent stray terrain from ruining your day. In fact, anything that can break the Sherp can be fixed from inside the vehicle in case outside the vehicle is too unpleasant. The giant tires act as both a flotation device for the Sherp as well as the suspension system. Air from the exhaust is used to inflate and deflate the tires to level it out and smooth out the terrain that the Sherp will destroy. Turning is tank-like by breaking the wheels on one side, allowing the Sherp to spin in place. The Sherp is designed for rescue services, military opera. Oh, who cares? That looks like fun. The Sherp has become popular with the off-roading crowd and even people like Kanye West who enjoy driving it around his Wyoming ranch. You can have a tank-like off-roader, or you can have your own recreational tank. 
for around $300,000, Howe and Howe will build you a civilian version of the Ripsaw tank. The sleek track vehicle is powered by 800 horsepower Duramax turbo diesel that can propel the Ripsaw to 60 miles per hour. If that's too little, there's a Ripsaw out sporting a 727 cubic inch engine, putting out 1500 horsepower with speed now limited by nerve. To keep you from getting tossed around in the cabin at those speeds, the interior cabin is suspended on its own set of air springs, in addition to the shock absorbers on the tracks. 20 inches of ground clearance makes sure that very few things get in the Ripsaw's way. That way, you can sit in your Recaro seats and operate the Garmin GPS touchscreens as well as a remote spotlight and camera. Since being offered to the public, it's gained a fair amount of attention, including appearing in the Fast and Furious franchise. There are some records held that you maybe didn't know was something there was a record for. Like JCB's fastest tractor, the Fast Track 2. Sold stock, JCB claims the base JCB 8000 series tractor's 48 miles per hour makes it the fastest production tractor in the world for those farmers who don't have time to waste. But 48 miles per hour just doesn't sound that sexy, even if it's a massive 11,000 pound tractor. So they modified their tractor and did a speed run at 103 miles per hour in the Fast Track 1. Having cracked the century, JCB won hunting for a buck 50 with the Fast Track 2. That was achieved by squeezing over 1,000 horsepower out of a 7.2 liter six cylinder turbo diesel. In one of the two passes for the record, they were able to best 150 miles per hour but the record, average from the run, stands at 135.91 miles per hour. Going fast was not actually all that out of character for the tractor manufacturer. Previously, they set a diesel land speed record of 328.8 miles per hour. Part of the reason we thought we'd have jetpacks by now is the 20th century's obsession with futurism, embodied by GM's Futureliner buses. No one event carried more promises of tomorrow like the World's Fair where visitors could see displays from different companies showing how they're working to improve everyone's life through science. In 1936, GM Research Vice President Charles Ketterling decided that he needed to take that show on the road, bringing their World's Fair film reels to people in GM's parade of progress. So they built eight rolling displays. Six of the 30-foot tall buses had walk-through displays with another setup with a stage and an eighth having a movie theater inside that showed off newsreels of all the new technology in the world. It was popular enough that more future liners were built, but the parade was put on hold while World War II sorted itself out. 12 future liners revived the tour in 1953, but by then, television took over people's imagination and the parade came to an end in 1956. All but four of the buses are accounted for, with auction prices ranging from 450000 to an eye-watering $4.3 at Barrett-Jackson. Let's face it, riding toys are wasted on children, well except for Lila Cayley's, the little girl that drifts her own riding toys. She's owning it. Adults deserve the fun. We have to go to jobs and make our own food and worry about bills. If you're the type that doesn't worry that much about bills, you can plop down just under $20,000 for the Swincar E-Spider. 4 kilowatt hour lithium batteries power 4 1 kilowatt hub mounted motors on the small awkward looking vehicle. But speed, which tops out at 18 miles per hour, and power are not the main attraction. The Swin car's wheels are mounted on articulated arms that keep all four on the ground and the small cabin flat. This gives it an approach angle of 70 degrees and the ability to ride along a 50 degree slope. The E-Spider is only two meters long with an eight and a half inch clearance. Sure, there are faster quads and more aggressive off-roaders, but there's nothing quite like the spider-axled little play toy. There's a design philosophy based around the idea as there's no such thing as too much. At least it seems that way in a world where the $13.2 million Thor 24 exists. What started as a regular semi has gone all sorts of bonkers. Two 14-liter 12-cylinder diesel engines have joined forces to have 24 pistons pushing the truck, but that's only the beginning. On top of that, 12 superchargers have been employed to shovel air and fuel into those 24 cylinders for a claimed horsepower output of 3,974 horsepower. To satisfy the Fast and Furious crowd, it also has eight nitrous oxide bottles. All of this is supposed to launch the 32,000 pound 44 foot monster to 130 miles per hour, after which four 12 foot parachutes are deployed to slow it back down. Developer Mike Hara is the madman who commissioned the beast that took seven years to make. It was eventually sold at auction for $13.2 million. Mercedes sub-brand Maybach 
is already so exclusive, Lord uses it as an example of how she'll never be a royal. But Goodyear subsidiary Folda wanted a test bed for their Kara Accelero tire and asked parent company Daimler to build them something nice and fancy that could crest 200 miles per hour. So a Maybach 57 was modified for the challenge. A paltry single V12 twin turbo putting down 690 horsepower and 750 foot pound of torque. All of that will give the 2.5 ton luxury coupe to 60 miles per hour from rest in just shy of 4.5 seconds on its way to a top speed of 217 miles per hour. After testing the tires, the car's life became a bit of a mystery. Rapper Birdman claimed to have bought the beast was intending to turn it red. Others gave ownership to Jay-Z. However, the car turned up in the hands of Mechatronic, who let Supercar Blondie have a look at the car while still riding on the test tires in 2019. The price has been reported anywhere between 8 and 11 million. One of the best methods for building a one-off custom is to take something from one thing and put it in something else entirely. Like the Corns family that took a 1939 Plymouth pickup from the junkyard and put in a 300 horsepower Jacobs radial engine out of a seaplane in the engine bay. The rest of the beast was given the airplane treatment, including side-by-side -side controls for pilot and co-pilot, or for a particularly anxious backseat driver, or the ultimate driver's head car. In addition, 1,000 hand-buck solid rivets were applied to the body panel seams that are now attached to a tube-frame chassis, replacing the underpinnings that were in no way read to accept a seaplane engine from the 50s. Transferring propeller power to wheel power involved a bunch of shade tree engineering and a belt system that ultimately attaches the engine to a hot rod standard turbo 400 automatic. Father Gary Corns added a bit of stage smoke to start up the proceedings to give it a classic airplane startup with a three gallon fuel tank that dumps into the exhaust once heated for that coughing smoke look. The truck was headed to Bonneville Salt Flats for a land speed run, but didn't pass inspection. Instead, it ran the show circuit and showed up on Jay Leno's garage. While the donor truck coming from the family's salvage yard, as well as most of the parts, it's hard to say what it cost to build, and it remains in the Corrin's hands for now. When you spend $117 million on a concept car, generally, you want it to have more of things, not less. That is not the case with the Lamborghini Egoista concept car. First of all, it has no roof. Who needs it? No one is driving their super or hyper car in the rain anyway. It also doesn't have a passenger seat. No one really likes that passenger white knuckling it through your joy rides anyway. The canopy and steering wheel remove like a F1 car to get in and get out. Keeping in Lamborghini's bull theme on their badge as well as having all their cars bear the names of successful fighting bulls. From the side, the car is meant to look like a charging bull. The rest of the design leans hard into the stealth fighter aesthetic that Lamborghini itself made popular. Lighting along the side is reminiscent of a stealth fighter jet lights. The angular body panels can actually move to adjust the car's aerodynamic demands. To really capture the stealth fighter connection, the wheels and body are made out of anti-radar material. All the better to catch the speed trap off guard when ringing out the 600 horsepower V10 out of the Gallardo. Built in 2013 to celebrate 50 years of being Lamborghini, the car now resides in the Museo Lamborghini in Italy. The problem with one-of-a-kind things is when their one-of-a-kind part breaks. It's not like you can call up Pep Boys and have them order something. You're gonna have to do some heavy parts hunting.